see what happens. Well, what happened here was is the rapid, when it had to transition from the first hole to the second hole, exceeded the uh, ability of the machine. We lost steps, and the way the gecko drives are set up, unfortunately, it resets to zero, and Mach keeps going on. And future development is for me to put in the Rogers DRO board, and if I do that, if it sees a lost step, it's going to halt the whole machine and stop this process from happening. So you got to be really careful with your feed rates. Because it ex if, if, when you're in the rapids, if it exceeds what the machine can do, then you have an issue with it. Well, it's apparent I lost my zero again, and uh, the flange isn't cutting to center. I'm going to stop the machine and re-zero it. Uh, I must have the feed rate up too high. Let's see if I can sort this out before it makes an, an absolute mess out of it. Oh, yeah. Definitely lost a zero. Definitely. Okay. I'm going to stop halt this.
Well, as you can see, it's still chewing away at it. I'm still got a little bit of learning here to do. The issue is the rapids. When it changes on the Z, it only is going a 15,000 step, but it's trying to do it so quickly that the mass of the table, and, and we're probably looking 200 pounds, maybe more. The vice weighs 70 pounds, the table weighs 100 pounds, and then the, the other table that goes back and forth on the, on the x-axis, it weighs 100 pounds. So uh, I have to tune the acceleration down a bit on the Z. It's, it's impeding it, and I lost my zero, and of course it tried to plow through. Now we didn't lose any x, y coordinates, but in, in this corner right here where I'm pointing to, it did plow right through it. Currently it's showing that it's at 315 thou, and it's going to try to mill through to 375. Now I have reset the, the zero on the Z, so I might be a little bit on the on the shy side. It could be a little bit less than that. We'll let it run and see what's happened. It's all a learning experience. And uh, that's why I wanted to try this on aluminum first, because it's a little bit more forgiving than uh, stainless steel or steel. And of course, I wouldn't be able to dry cut uh, either of those. Uh, aluminum, certainly I can. Well, we didn't make it all the way through, but we'll take a look at this in a bit. Once I cut it out, I'll, I'll cut the rest of it out by hand. Thanks for watching. Well, I thought I'd just take a picture of this, give you a little bit better idea of what's going on here with the cut. It's not bad. It, it, Cam Bam, I use for uh, it's the first CAD CAM program I've ever used. Uh, took me a while to figure out the ins and outs. It's, I used to use AutoCAD 9. Well, here's the parts that I cut out. Um, you know, for first time around, I'm not overly impressed, but I'm not overly disappointed. Gives you an idea. That's the cutout. There's the other part. Uh, we lost a zero a couple of times, so that's why we have the mess. There's a circle. It is about nine thou out around. Uh, it's got a little flat spot. Oh, I can feel it somewhere right in there. And that circle, the same thing. It's about nine thou out. So, um... Take a look on the other side. Go from there. Looks like there's a little bit of chatter too. You can see the the way it's going. However, uh, for an exhaust flange, if that was what it was, or an intake manifold flange, certainly that would do quite nicely. Um, just let the machine do its thing. I'm getting out of the way. 
the amount of time it would take me to do it by hand, laying it out and drilling and boring and, and then finishing it off is considerable time. So, um, that's how it goes. We'll see how how we get a little better as time goes on and, and get the kinks out of the uh, out of the machine and, and I've got to get that Rogers board working on the DRO so that I know if it goes into fault or misses a step it's either going to halt it or it's going to adjust it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye now.